So I think my biggest soft spot is for sick kids. Um, like any kid dealing with some sort of disability or handicap of any sort, any sort of illness that some kid is going through. Uh, I mean, it is like instant waterworks, man. Like I tear up immediately when I'm, I see a sick kid. Um, so this story really, really struck a chord with me. I want to show you this. This is in the mirror and they say baby Riley's 1.8 million pound life-saving drug on NHS for devastating spinal condition. 1.8 million pounds, by the way, is, um, I believe that's over $2 million. So the cost of the medicine and the treatment is over $2 million. So let me give you some more specifics on this. Um, the parents of Riley, by the way, Riley's three months old. The parents of Riley were told that he had a severe form of spinal muscular atrophy, and it causes progressive muscle weakness and loss of movement and difficulty breathing. So they, they noticed something was wrong and they were able to diagnose Riley. They were told he had about two years to live based on his condition. The mom said, quote, when we started to suspect he may have SMA, I began researching the condition and came across Zolgensma. Zolgensma? Zolgensma. Uh, which at the time had only been announced as approved by the NHS. But we didn't yet know where it would be available or if Riley would be able to have it. So only the NHS had approved this. So what that tells me is other countries had not approved this treatment yet. Okay? The, the one-hour intravenous infusion works by providing a functional copy of the gene known as SMN1, which the body needs to make a protein that is essential for the normal functioning of nerves which control muscle movements. That's, I mean, that's super complex. I have no idea how they were able to come up with this treatment and successfully pull it off, but that's amazing that anything could do that. It makes me just marvel at science. Patients with SMA have a defective copy of that gene, so they have to fix the gene effectively which seems impossible. Like, I don't even know how they came up with this in theory, never mind in reality. They say Zolgensma passes into the nerve cells and provides instructions to the body to produce the protein to restore nerve function. It's truly incredible that this thing exists. You can see why it's as expensive as it is. About 40 babies are born each year with the more severe type 1 form of SMA that would benefit from the drug. And so they did the surgery at the university hospitals in Bristol and Weston, uh, the NHS Foundation Trust, which includes Bristol Royal Hospital for Children, is one of only four centers across the country administering that gene therapy. So even there, only four of the hospitals are really equipped to handle such a thing. So only the NHS has approved this drug, and only four of the hospitals in the entire country can do this procedure. So the point of this story is that you have a, a drug that costs over $2 million. Not even approved in other countries. It's the cure for this precious, beautiful little baby. Um, the parents had to pay $0.00, and, zero cents, and they did the treatment on Riley, and Riley is doing well. Isn't that amazing? This story, there's so much packed into this one little story, right? It busts up all these myths about single-payer systems, national healthcare systems. This idea that, you know, they're worse, they don't have nearly as much innovation, we're on the cutting edge because we're so, you know, we're, we're much more for-profit and capitalistic with our entire healthcare and health insurance uh, industries. Well, they have this drug, they approve this drug, they can administer this drug, and the NHS is all government. Everything's government. It's not even just 
just no health insurance companies. It's also the health care providers are government. So this is as government as it, this is as socialistic as you could get for a health care system. And this is what they were able to do. And the drug cost over $2 million and the parents paid $0 and 0 cents for it. So here comes the question. What would have happened to Riley if Riley was born in the U.S. and if they were U.S. citizens and not U.K. citizens? What would have happened? First of all, the drug isn't even approved here. It's not even approved here. Second of all, even if it was approved here, you know the way our system works. And you know that even if insurance would cover it, number one, they would fight to not cover it. But number two, even if they did cover it, you'd have a massive copay or deductible or something that they clonk you with over the head and say, you owe this much. And so either if Riley was in the U.S. and his family was in the U.S., either Riley would have died, Riley would have, I would, I want to say gotten the treatment, but perhaps it wouldn't have been covered and they wouldn't have been able to pay for it. They could have gone bankrupt. I don't even see a scenario in which Riley would have gotten the treatment. I can't even fathom that, because it's not even approved here. The drug's not approved here, and even if it was approved here, insurance companies would try to wiggle out of paying for it because it's more experimental than proven, right? And by the way, so far, it looks like it worked for Riley. So I, I don't see any other scenario here. I don't see... Even if they did somehow magically find a way to get Riley the drug they could have gone bankrupt trying to pay for it so I ask you what system makes more sense now you could say Kyle this is an anecdote okay but whenever you debate people on the issue of single payer healthcare Medicare for all all the other side ever has is fucking anecdotes and all I ever do usually is quote stats and facts like for example the Commonwealth Fund study which looked at 11 of the modern healthcare systems in the world, and the U.S. ranked 11th out of 11. That's a fact. So I quote empirical stuff, or objective stuff. Other people come back with subjective anecdotes. All right, if you want to play the anecdote game, I'll play the fucking anecdote game. Here's an anecdote. So go ahead, talk about your waiting lines and whatnot. That's, that's often what they go to when they talk about the single-payer healthcare systems. As if we don't have waiting lines here. Here, we have waiting lines, and it's tied to the size of your wallet. There's 45,000 to 60,000 people that die every year because they can't get basic health care here. That's not a fucking waiting line? That's not a waiting line. Not only do we have a waiting line, there's up to 60,000 dead bodies on our waiting line. There they prioritize according to need. Here we prioritize according to social strata. Hey, how much money do you make? Let me, let me do a wallet biopsy. How's your insurance? All that stuff. I teared up the first, when I saw the, the picture of Riley and I, I read the story. I was tearing up a little bit, you know, because I was thinking, this poor baby wouldn't have made it in the U.S. And how many babies in the U.S. are born every year that have this and can't get the treatment, can't get the help? Healthcare, in my opinion, is a human right. Don't tell me we can spend $7 trillion blowing shit up in the Middle East and getting nothing out of it. But we can't have a single-payer healthcare system or a un any form of a universal healthcare system like every other developed country has it, fuck right off from now until forever if you say that. Seriously, fuck off. It doesn't, at, at this point, at this late date, it doesn't even seem, seem like the opposition is being honest. And you guys know me, I'm, I'm like a stalwart and fundamentalist in my approach to this where I always say give people the benefit of the doubt until they prove otherwise that they don't deserve it. So I treat everybody as an honest actor, but it seems now at this late date in this conversation about healthcare that anybody arguing against this stuff seems dishonest, right? Because every study that looks at it says we do worse than other developed countries. And, you know, if, the, if we're really just talking about funding differences, then why not just pay for it with taxes over everybody going out of pocket and a bunch of people go bankrupt? Medical bills are one of the top causes of bankruptcy in the U.S., I don't see how anybody can come up with a coherent argument against this. And so if we're going to take every little anecdote to do a strike against the, uh, the universal healthcare systems, well, here's an anecdote in favor. I, I shudder at the thought of what would have happened to Baby Riley. Baby Riley was born in the U.S. I really do. I absolutely do. And by the way, I'll finish up with this. 
Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, do yourself a favor and go watch the video of people in the UK reacting to how much US healthcare costs out of pocket. Do yourself a favor and watch that video. Because then you'll really get a sense of just how screwed over we are. Because every single thing they're told, they are floored by. They can't believe it costs that much money. Because there costs nothing out of pocket. Nothing. Our taxes go towards endless war and bailing out Wall Street and other corporations. Their taxes go towards Baby Riley getting health care. Let me ask you, do you have a problem with the over $2 million being spent on Baby Riley surgery? Is that going to keep you up at night? Are you mad because your money is being used in a way you don't approve of it being used? My guess is every fucking one of you is like, spend the money and save the baby. Spend the money and save the baby. We have over 330, 40 million people in this country. We can't pay 2 million to save a baby's life. Of course I'm in favor of saving the baby's life. Everybody would be in favor of that. So don't tell me that this is not something that the American people could get on board for. I'm sure all of them are already on board for it. Your government is screwing you. The health insurance companies are screwing you. The health care companies are screwing you. Our system is broken. Here's just a little glimpse into what it's like living under a more humanitarian system, a more rational, logical, civil system. This is what it's like. It's not like this nightmare here.